We are often asking a question, when does the gut copy relation converge? When does it not converge? And it is very hard to figure out a necessary condition for uh, the convergence. It's very hard to figure out a sufficient and necessary condition for the convergence. But there are sufficient conditions for the convergence of Jacobi iteration, which means there are some conditions you can check, and if it satisfies this condition, then you know Jacobi iteration is going to converge. So, for example, one of the method to check the convergence of a Jacobi iteration is called a diagonal dominance. What does diagonal dominance mean? If you have a matrix, the diagonal entries of A, of this matrix A, A11, A22, etc., to ANN, the absolute values of the diagonal entries, if they are larger than the sum of the absolute values of all of its off diagonals, okay, so, 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 let's say A, the off diagonals, I will just use another color to denote it. A12, A21, etc. So if the absolute value of AKK for any K is greater than the summation of I not equal to K of AKI absolute value. This is called diagonal dominance. Actually, this is called strict diagonal dominance. If you have greater or equal, that's uh, a non-strict diagonal dominance. Remember for our Poisson's equation, do we have strict diagonal dominance? No, but we have the weaker non-strict diagonal dominance, right? Because the diagonals are minus 2, and the off-diagonals, we have two off-diagonals, both 1 and 1. In the 2D Poisson's equation, the diagonal is minus 4, the off-diagonals, we have four ones. In 3D, the diagonal would be minus 6, and we have six uh, off-diagonals. And if you remember our finite uh, element case, when we solve the Poisson's equation, we also have a non-strict uh, version of diagonal dominance. All right. So if a matrix is diagonally dominant, we know that Jacobi iteration converges. So how do we know that? We need to use uh, a theorem called the uh, Gershgorin's circle theorem. So what does that mean? It means the eigenvalues of a matrix so the lambda k of a matrix, all the lambda k has to lie in at least the one of the so-called uh, gersh circle. So every lambda k must be uh, within a circle that is uh, uh, in a circle that is defined as all the lambdas such that lambda minus one of the diagonals is less or less or equal to the uh, summation of the i not equal to k a i or a k i so in the complex plane this is a circle it's a circle centered at AKK with a diameter of the summation of the absolute value of the off diagonal entries. Okay, that means all the eigenvalues has to lie in the union of all the Gershgorin circles. And each Gershgorin circle is corresponding to one row of the matrix. So why is that the case? It's the case because if we have a eigenvalue, uh, let me say a times vk equal to lambda k times vk. Okay. 
So if that is the case, let's pick. Uh, so okay, so let's actually use j here instead of k. Uh, I want to. So a times v j is equal to lambda j times v j. So let's pick k such that v uh, k j. So the kth entry of the vector v j has greatest magnitude. which means v of kj is greater than uh, v of ij for any i not equal to k, or right, greater or equal. So why is this helpful? It's helpful because we can write this equality, we can write the specific line of that equality as the summation of that particular line of the matrix which is a k i times v i j would be equal to the corresponding line of the right hand side which is lambda j times what? What is the corresponding row of lambda j times v j? If I choose the kth row yeah, VKJ, right. Great. So now let's try to move all the VKJs to one side and uh, uh, all the non VKJs to the other side. What we get is AKK times VKJ minus lambda J times VKJ would be equal to the minus of the summation of all the I not equal to J of AKI times V. Ij, and now we get something that is very close to the Gish-Gorin's theorem, and let's uh, figure this out by dividing both sides by v k j, and take the absolute value. So a k k minus lambda j absolute value would be equal to taking absolute value also on this side, so the minus sign doesn't have to be there, and. Uh, um, we have a k i times v i j. Oh, by the way, I have moved the absolute value from outside the summation to inside the summation. Therefore, we have a less or equal to sign, right? So we have a less or equal because just uh, moving the absolute value to here, v k j. And also, we know this is strictly less or equal to one because we have chosen v k j to be the largest among are the vijs. So this again is going to be a summation. Oh, here we also have absolute value. Summation k not equal uh, i not equal to k, absolute value of a k i. Right? So here we prove the gersh gorin's theorem. Basically, all the eigenvalues has to lie in one of these circles. And fortunately, for a diagonally dominant matrix, the Jacobi iteration matrix, uh, has Gersh Gorin's, the, uh, has Gersh -Gorin's um, circles that uh, are very friendly to us in the sense that the minus D inverse times L plus U would be equal to a matrix that is minus uh, zeros on the diagonal because we already removed the diagonal we are looking at L plus U and all the diagonal entries are, for example, a12 divided by a11, a13 divided by a11, etc. So the Gershkorim circles are centered at zero because all the a AKKs are zero, right? So if you look at the complex plane, all the circles are centered at zero. How about the diameters? The diameters are the summation of the absolute value of all these diagonal entries. And we know that if we are diagonally dominant, the a11 would be greater than the summation of all the absolute values of the diagonal entries. So the diameter, which is the summation of all of these absolute values, would be less than what? 1, right. 
So all the Gishgorim circles would be centered at around zero with diameters, various diameters, but all of them are less than one. What does that mean in terms of the eigenvalues of the Jacobi iteration matrix? They have to lie on a circle that has to be strictly within the stability region, right? So, so basically all the eigenvalues has to have its magnitude less than one. Therefore, for diagonally dominant matrices, we are guaranteed to converge. Right. And we can also have a, a very similar argument of saying that for non-strictly diagonally dominant matrices like the Poisson's equation, we would, uh, we would have some Gershgorin circles that are exactly having uh, a radius of 1. Okay. So then, what we know is all the eigenvalues of the Jacobi iteration matrix, they cannot have magnitude greater than 1, but they can potentially have magnitude equal to 1. That means you may have some modes that are never decaying, but like you shouldn't diverge. Your Jacobi iteration uh, could be, basically the, the error equation, in the error equation, the error could be constant.